Uh, as we told you, today being June 15th, and that is, of course, the constitutional deadline for a balanced budget to be passed in Sacramento. Last year, there was a bit of drama to this because some people actually believed that they didn't pass the budget, they wouldn't get paid because they voted for that proposition from the year before. And, of course, as we found out, and that was actually pretty dramatic. They did pass a budget. Brown wouldn't sign it, and then the controller wouldn't pay them. That got interesting. And then we eventually showed up at an assemblyman's office here in Burbank. With food. With food because he was whining. He missed a paycheck, and he was uh, acting like his family was going to starve to death. There's no drama Mike this Gatto. year. Because, yeah, just a month or so ago, a He's... judge ruled that the controller, John Chung, can't do that. So, as John pointed out, we both pointed out, well... It, it, who's supposed to judge whether or not it's a balanced so, budget? Because that's the wording of the uh, of right. the initiative. So here, just for the record, so you know, here's how they scammed you. They told you that these guys would not get paid if they didn't pass a balanced budget. But since there's no mechanism to dock their pay, like there's nobody given the authority to dock their pay, their pay can't really be docked. So you voted saying, oh, good, they'll get their pay docked. No! There's nobody in charge of docking their pay. There isn't, no. And their budget, therefore, doesn't have to be balanced. And this thing is not. This thing is wildly out of balance. The judge decided that since the controller is a separate office from the legislature, he shouldn't be doing that. He has no right to do that. We tell you don't vote for these things. Don't vote for these things. We're not kidding. Jeez. Remember. The real power behind that ballot initiative were the unions. And what they really wanted to do is take away the two-thirds vote for a budget, which means knock the Republicans out of the picture, get it through. It's full of gimmicks. It's full of holes. It won't be balanced. And then, you know, hair on fire, we need taxes. We saw this coming. There, now, and that's why we're voting on taxes in November. If the Republicans were still part of the negotiation and you needed Republican votes to pass this thing, yeah. They it had... draws out through the summer, and oh, all the journalists don't like that. Yeah, I didn't understand why people get upset with that. Because what eventually would happen... And honestly, is... a lot of those budgets were gimmicky, too. They're, they're, they're full of crap, but <laughs> slightly less crap than we have now. I guess. But what they put in is like $7 billion worth of increases, which happens to match that $7 billion tax referendum in November. Hmm. So there's not a budget cut. This is a budget increase with a tax increase coming in November if you don't listen to us and vote no. So they have a million ways to scam you, and you fall for this stuff. Don't. Don't. Jeez. So what they did was they have passed the essential budget and sent it on to Jerry Brown, but they say they actually have some differences with Governor Jerry Brown However, approving the budget today, even without the accompanying legislation to resolve their differences with Jerry Brown, allows them to continue to collect their paychecks right. under Proposition so, 25 because the lawmakers themselves have the power to say whether or not a budget is balanced. Right. <laughs> so, and, nice and, vote there. And get this. It's 777 pages. Wow. Passing the budget requires two dozen or more separate bills the entire contents of which are virtually impossible for any one person to read in the days or sometimes minutes leading up to a floor vote. So you get 25 bills. The first one here is 777 pages, and it's presented to you often within minutes of your vote. And they tell you, oh, yeah, it's balanced. Uh, just vote yes so we get paid. Now, the Republicans actually walked out of the negotiation since they don't matter. Here's a quote from Daryl Steinberg, which we think you'll enjoy. The Republicans are desperately trying to find a way to make a point, but what's been apparent around here for years is that when you sign pledges, a tax pledge, and you take extreme positions, you don't give yourself a chance to be as relevant as you want to be. Yeah, that's Daryl Steinberg's thumb at your face. That's right, because you don't, you don't sign. You, you, because you, people you, stick to promises. Because you don't agree to raise taxes. Then you're marginalized in Sacramento. Great. Well, you know what? But again, I got to blame all you people voting. Stop voting for these guys. Stop voting for these guys. Stop voting for these guys. They're in office because you all vote for them. If you didn't vote for them, they wouldn't be there. Stop saying you disapprove of the legislature uh, by 90%. Stop. And then you vote 90% of these guys back in. Jeez. Uh, most agree, especially some Republicans I'm reading, that this is full of gimmicks again. 
Uh, they're expecting over $94 billion in revenue. That probably won't happen like it didn't happen with last year's budget. So what are you going to do? This is what we're stuck with. All right, when we come back. Obama and the birds. Obama and the birds. Obama and the Rose Garden. Giving out an illegal alien, illegal alien amnesty to the young people. We'll explain. This is a version of the DREAM Act that he couldn't get passed through Congress. Then how does he get to invoke it himself? I'll tell you all about it. 